Hey guys, uh, Mr. Stark here. I wanted to sh go over the forward reverse contactor and the typical circuit. This is this circuit's actually the basic minimum circuit for a forward reverse to work. Now, this is the contactor that you would use. It's a motor starter, and this is exactly what you would use to allow this circuit to go forward and reverse. So let's talk about what is forward reverse. So in the field, oftentimes we may want to uh, have a motor go forward. So this F coil represents the forward function. You would hit a button that is pretty much a normally open push button. Looks very much like a start button except it says forward on it. You would hit the forward button and you would have electron flow through this normally closed R contact, I'll tell you what that is in a minute, and it would energize the F coil. And of course, at this point, we should know when we energize a coil, the contacts that have the same name change state instantaneously in this case. So the F coil becomes energized, this F contact would close, and I would maintain my holding circuit through that contact to the coil through the overload and then back home. Now, if I wanted to go in reverse, it's not, uh, I, I should say, healthy for a motor to just hit a reverse button when the motor might already be high in RPM or under load. So if you were to do that in a normal instance, if you hit the reverse button, you would actually stop the motor in its tracks and it would be uh, not a good thing for the motor. First, you'd have a collapsing magnetic field, and then you'd be forcing it to go in reverse, all of which, over time, could hurt the life of the motor. And, you know, you could think of it this way. If you were running down a track at, you know, uh, you know, 20 miles an hour as fast as you can, and then you had to instantly stop and instantly go in reverse really, really hard, really, really fast, or like a car transmission doing the same thing. So it would hurt your body or it hurt the component. So what we do in this case is we provide an interlock in the circuit, that's what these contacts are for, that allows uh, the motor to come to a stop before you go into reverse. So how does that work? This normally closed contact is normally closed in the forward instance because when I energize the F coil, this closes and my forward is simply in forward. Now, if I was to hit this reverse button, if I was to try to hit the reverse button, think about what would happen. I know I have electrons on this side of the circuit already. I know I do because they're already on that line. If I hit the reverse, remember that this contact closed. Well, when we're in forward, that closed, that means this one had to have opened because here's another F contact. So while this closed and this one opens, it takes away the path for current flow to the reverse button. So if I hit the reverse, this is actually an open circuit because the forward button's already energized, the F coil, and that contact is closed, which means this one's open. If I hit reverse, it won't work. It'll only work when I hit the stop button and take power away from the F coil and de-energize the circuit and then obviously you hit the stop button, you could certainly go stop reverse. The idea is that you wait for the motor, the RPMs, or for, for it to stop turning before you hit the reverse button. So the interlock is a great circuit because it, it allows a, one function to happen while it prohibits another function from happening at the same time. So if you look at that circuit, you'll be doing this in lab, and you may only be doing this with relays, which we could certainly simulate. I could do the forward reverse circuit with a couple of these relays and perform the same function. But I'd rather just give you the actual forward reverse contactor because there's other functions that we can do with this as well. So if you take a look at this from close view, you're going to see some things in here that you haven't seen before. And there's quite a bit to it too. Uh, the first thing we want to take notice of is there is one coil over here, and there's one coil on this side. This could be forward, this would be reverse. So like coils, coils need 
uh, letters or something to tie into. So A1, as we remember from the other motor starter, and A2 represent the coil. Also, we have A1 and A2 on the reverse coil. We also have normally closed contacts and normally open contacts on both coils. So I've got a set of normally open and a set of normally closed, a set of normally open and a set of normally closed on the reverse. So let's take a look at our circuit again. I need a set of normally open and a set of normally closed on the forward contactor, which I have, and I also need a set of normally closed and normally open on the reverse contactor. So you might be able to tell already that the normally open is providing the holding circuit and the normally closed is providing the interlock circuit between the contactor of one and the contactor of another. Now, take this a step further. There are other items on this contactor that you need to be aware of. If it's going to run in forward, well, it has to run in reverse. So normally we only have one motor starter and we would have one set of feeds. You've got an L1, an L2, and an L3 to feed the motor. We're only talking one motor, but yet I have two contactors. How we eliminate the extra wiring, if you will, is the factory supplies you with a jumper block. And basically this jumper block brings the feed over to the reverse contactor because if it's in reverse you need the feed to be over there so let's just pretend I tied my three phase feed into these three holes my three phase would be there but it would only be there for forward so this nice little jumper that they give you and I'm gonna take it out of its it comes from the factory nice and tight and I'm gonna take it out of its uh, shell if you will to show you exactly this bridging uh, feed and all it is is a, is a set of jumpers that get you from one side to the other so it comes out and you can see what I mean this would be into the let's say the forward coil A phase B phase C phase but then there's internal jumpers bring it over to the reverse contactor as well so the motor can run in forward and reverse so that's a nice little thing and the other thing is you've probably either did the homework already or maybe you didn't in order for a motor to reverse we need to be able to swap any two leads and if I swapped L1 with L3 my motor would automatically go in reverse what does that mean it really means if I took the feed from here and put it over here and put this feed from here over there it would, the motor would automatically go in reverse because of the physics of the magnetic field uh, it would just go in reverse you'll learn that back in another lesson so in order for this to actually go in reverse we need to flip-flop this jumper coming out of the bottom so if we take this one out of the bottom it's got a jumper in the bottom as well take this one out really quick and you'll see what I mean and they even tell you what it is on the jumper which leads have been reversed or swapped if you will so we take this out and when you get in lab you'll probably see if you can't see it already there is some writing right here and this one says T1, T2, T3, T1, T2, T3. Remember T stands for load. And what they're showing you with this little uh, configuration of these little jumpers, these little things on the bottom, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, they're showing us that T1 and T3 are connected. T2 and T2 are connected like they normally would be. And then T1 and T3 are connected on this side. So it internally reverses the leads in this jumper. So when we go into reverse, it goes in reverse. The other thing that's on this contactor that I don't have right now is the overload block. And that overload block, 
would simply snap into these bottom three terminals and it would look something like this small and square and it would snap right into the base and like the old that other uh, contactor that we saw it had the adjustable dial for the overload well that would snap in there and then you'd have overload protection because our feed is still only coming out of three wires so it's pretty neat how this thing works when you hit forward you see this pull in and you hit reverse and this does nothing until you hit the stop button but nonetheless when we do go in reverse the reverse power is on this side of the contactor it makes its way over there because of the top jumper but it makes its way over here through the bottom jumper so it can go out the overload block and then go out to your motor so that you can you know you have that overload protection I'll have that overload block in another video because we've got to build it it has to snap in and screw in so <clears throat> back to this the top lead is normal just the way it is so if you can see this uh, all L1 L2 and L3 go to their perspective spots they're not reversed this is the top jumper there's there's more to it than this obviously on the back of this too <clears throat> it comes with a uh, a way to mount this to din rail and din rail is kind of our catch-all stuff for mounting stuff this is a piece of din rail basically it's a piece of metal that's got some flanges on either side so that you can snap your relays on it and these are usually free to move around and if you want to take you can't just pull the relay off if you want to take it off you have to put your screwdriver in this little tab and pull it out and it'll come out they have a little spring mechanism so when you're using this you work opposite the tab, you put that in the crease, and then you just snap it down, and it allows that thing to stay in there nice and snug. And every single relay on the planet has it. Same thing with this. This could snap onto DIN rail, and, uh, which it usually does inside of the enclosure. When I go back to the lab, I'll show you. This will snap on, and it has to come off with a little bit of pressure to uh, release it. So pretty versatile stuff. Another last thing I want to show you before we go on this video is, you know, these covers come off. And very similar to the other starters, we have a coil inside. And when the coil is energized, this will pull in. And that's pretty much it on that. There's other adjustments on this, but that's not for this video. So take a look at this and realize that when you see these contactors that are kind of snapped together, it's a forward reverse contactor and most of them are pretty typical to this and obviously when you see this drawing and you see this interlock circuit we'll go over it one more time F coils energized open contact closes close contact opens so that you can't come over here and hit reverse because it'll become a, it'll just be an open circuit and it won't allow that motor to just jam into reverse <clears throat> we have other ways of uh, making sure the motor doesn't get destroyed when it goes in reverse. I have another circuit that will we incorporate the interlock with timers. So when it's in forward and then you hit the stop button, you have to wait whatever your setting is on your timer. Let's just say 10 seconds. 10 seconds later, the timer times out, and then you could hit reverse. And this allows the motor to come to a complete stop by letting just the normal centrifugal force slow the motor down and then it'll come to a complete stop and then when you hit reverse it won't buck the motor and then you'll be back in you know back in form and you won't destroy it so hopefully this helped and i'll see you at the next video